Have you ever wondered what it would be like to simply tweet a single word and quickly rack up 29,000 likes? Well, if you're the Hogwarts Legacy Twitter account, you don't have to wonder because that's exactly what happened when they tweeted out the word jump. That's right, J U. MP. Now, when it comes to the whole jump button situation in Hogwarts Legacy, I feel like there are two groups of people out there. The first group of you is saying, did he really just make a video on a jump button? Oh wait, people have actually been asking about this jump button? Why does it matter? Why is it such a big deal? And then the other half of you is basically like, please give us a jump button. We must have a jump button. No exceptions. The jump button has long been a staple of video games, and it's usually more of a story when a game doesn't have a jump button. But with Hogwarts Legacy carefully showing only footage of characters exploring on foot or by air, or even in the middle of combat, in fact, no player character has ever been seen jumping in the game until now. In fact, its curious absence is what led fans down the rabbit hole of speculation wondering whether or not one would be included at all. And shockingly, surprisingly, throughout all the Hogwarts Legacy footage we had seen so far, there was never a clear example of a character jumping, which left many fans to wonder, and some fans, like me, to assume that there actually was no jump button. Perhaps they'd taken a new approach, like say, the new God of War, which replaced a traditional jump button with a contextual jump button instead. Now, if you aren't familiar with this, think back to the old school Legend of Zelda games such as Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. In these games, Link did not have a jump button like he does in Breath of the Wild. Now, if you ran across a ledge, Link would automatically jump. If you needed to climb somewhere, same thing. Very similar to what the recent God of War games have been doing, which is in contrast to the previous God of War games on the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, which had a dedicated jump button and was really quite an important part of Kratos' arsenal. So does this whole confirmation of a jump button even matter? And if it does, what exactly does it mean for the gameplay? Well, that's what I'm gonna explain today. And I think we can look at a recent example that will really help us to understand this. So let's take, for example, the recently crowned game of the year, Elden Ring. Now, for a lot of longtime From Software fans, especially fans who had played the Souls games, Demon Souls, and even Bloodborne, one of the biggest pieces of information that came out in the lead up to the game was the fact that Elden Ring would be adding a dedicated jump button. Now, there are plenty of videos online, I'm sure, that talk about the significance of this for the Souls series, some that really get into the technical details of how this matters in gameplay, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple for you here, and it really all comes down to one word exploration. So let's take a look at how the jump button changed up the formula for the Souls series, and I think we'll come away with a better understanding of how it could play out in Hogwarts Legacy. One of the most obvious ways it benefited Elden Ring, and will likely benefit Hogwarts Legacy, is by opening up the overall sense of exploration and freedom to explore. By adding a jump button, the developers at From Software had more freedom to not only create a wide-ranging open world, but also one with plenty of verticality in both its landscape and the various physical structures about the region. You see, at its core, the jump button, and whether or not one is present, plays an incredible role in the overall level design for a game. Without one, many of the more vertical structures or obstacles presented in games really end up existing only as visual eye candy or pleasing to look at scenery, and they end up not being a true obstacle the player can overcome with some carefully timed platforming. Now, as someone who is currently playing through God of War Ragnarok and just replayed through the 2018 version of God of War, it's interesting to see how these games with no jump button at all handle that exploration. They have to find other ways of getting around this. God of War, for example, has lots of climbing. In fact, the recent one added a new mechanic where you can use the Blades of Chaos to kind of leap to a certain point, which is a fun little design choice that actually improves upon the first game because you're not sitting there waiting for Kratos to climb all the way up the mountainside. Now, what's interesting about this, as much as I love these new God of War games, there is a certain linear feel to them. Now, even though you can go and fully explore basically anywhere you go in God of War, it always feels like a linear exploration, if that makes sense. And yet, there's just something about when you have that jump button, when you have that verticality and that full scale map that you can just look in any single direction and go there, it is definitely what I would prefer for Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm excited to see it going in this direction. Now, jumping back to Elden Ring, its open world is packed with detail and plenty of secrets for players to find. Some of these secrets require very precise jumps or leaping across a gap at just the right time. So even though we have yet to play or see these types of scenarios in Hogwarts Legacy, but just the fact that a dedicated jump button exists actually tells us they're at least 
possible. Now, although primarily used with close range melee weapons like swords and axes, Elden Ring also used its jump button to great effect in combat. Jump attacks were added and were actually one of the best ways in the game to break enemy posture and open them up for a visceral attack. Of course, Hogwarts Legacy's combat is expected to be almost entirely ranged combat with the various spells we'll have at our disposal. But even if jumping isn't a key part of our offensive combat arsenal, it's almost certain to play a key role in our evasive maneuvers along with the dodge roll mechanic that we've already seen. There may also be times where securing a higher vantage point will allow us to actually attack enemies from afar or perhaps even escape undetected. At the end of the day, the jump button is a design choice and an incredibly important one at that. Now, don't get me wrong, I have played and enjoyed many games both with and without dedicated jump buttons, but the presence of one here in Hogwarts Legacy actually leaves me very encouraged about the possibilities of exploration, combat, and puzzle solving, all thanks to the presence of a dedicated jump button. Now, while gameplay is always going to be king for me while we're out and about exploring that open world, we're really going to need something nice to listen to, right? The Wizarding World has such a story tradition of delivering spectacular music, and it actually seems like that is going to be the case with Hogwarts Legacy as well. We just got a sneak peek at some of the music for the game, and I've already done a full breakdown of that here. You can check it out on the right side of your screen now. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.